Into the box it comes, field with the clearance. Florida State is 16-0-1 when leading at the half this season. They have not lost a game. Rubka got in there to head that away. Another cross comes into the box. And again it comes in and good commanding presence there from Cassie Miller off her line for Florida State. Florida State also, if you like analytics, has not been scored on in over 495 minutes. Last time they were scored on was in the final minute of the ACC semifinals against Notre Dame. It's interesting, too, when you talk to the Florida State team as we did yesterday and you say, why this year? Why is it different? How can you get over that hump? Having been to four consecutive college cups as seniors now. And they said, with this confident look, and you can see it on the field, we're beating teams like we've never beat them before. We're dominating like we've never dominated before. In the past, we were winning 1-0 and, you know, holding on. Now we're winning with force. And you can see that swagger in them. Yeah, what was the word they used when we interviewed some of the ladies on the team? Dominating games. Uh, led by that young woman, Dagny Brynja's daughter, who said on the loss to UCLA last year in the NCAA College Cup, and she said, look, we had possession, no chances created, and now as a team, we can become more direct, and we've added pressing play to our repertoire to make us different. Here's the Megan Campbell throw that gets launched in. What a weapon this is. Whipped into the near post, headed away. Ross will come back in. This is going to be a bit of a tester. The offside flag was up. Jane Campbell, an outstanding goalkeeper for Stanford, coming off her line. Fourteen shutouts for Campbell. Only a sophomore. He's already played in a youth World Cup at the under-20 level for the United States. I mean, sometimes I look at the, the dossiers on these players and just <laughs> the experience that they've gathered already at 19 and 20 years of age, 18 years of age. Coivisto, Fields is trying to get in and out of her way, and it's saved by Stanford now. Kendall Romai. Good pressure again by Florida State. Brynja's daughter up there providing pressure with Shayna Williams behind her. Not the best of balls here. Maybe an opportunity for Stanford to make a difference here. A chance to tie things up. Kicked off the line. Saving play getting in behind the goalkeeper, Cassie Miller. What a chance for Stanford, and it comes off of a mistake to sweep it away was number 22, Kirsten Crowley. And Ewell, what a nice ball. No Shioma Bakugu behind her running. And Crowley stepping in behind Miller. What a nice save. Two and goal how, line clearances here today. And how about Ewell with the presence to know without even looking, eyes behind her head, to just play that nice little ball into a Bakugu. Best chance of the night for Stanford. First chance for a Bakugu. Brynja's daughter now lays off a beautiful ball. Pickett tries to whip it in. Cross is cut out. Oh, a chance to make it two. Blasting it at the near post was Brynja's daughter. And standing up to it bravely was the goalkeeper, Jane Campbell. Brynja's daughter just tried to drive it right through her. And the presence of Brynja's daughter to realize she looked up, no one's in the box, I'm gonna cut it back and try and create something myself. So many players trying to send that early ball in to no one in the box. What a save by Campbell as well. Stood up to the power of that shot. Michaela Hahn now. 
How big a save is that? Because you go down two goals early like that, and that's just a mental crusher. Here's Pickett now, stopping, starting, gets across into the near post. The glancing header off the top. And over the crossbar, it's Shayna Williams again. And Pickett so good at just getting in line, picking out a runner. Shayna Williams making that near post run. She'll want that one back. Good. How about Carson Pickett? 13 assists on the year. Wanted a 14th there. The German Isabella Schmidt. Brynja's daughter uses his body, uses her body well. What a presence Jane Campbell is in goal for Stanford. You can see the change already in those outside backs for Stanford because both of them in a higher starting position. Ewell can't get there. They tried to play into her feet. Here's Jamea Fields. Another loss of possession here in a bad area. Can Stanford capitalize? Look at that. Unbelievable from Carson Pickett to come in there and punch the danger. And the best chances for Stanford have come off self-inflicted mistakes from Florida State. Ubagagu on the turn. Point Visto with the use of her body. Jamia Fields holds it up, whips the ball into midfield. Brynja's daughter, wonderful control. Michaela Hahn, Miller. Stanford has got a bit of energy here. They whip in a good cross. Ubagagu. Great recovery by Fields there, because Ibagagu's got pace. Just out fighting her for that one. Pickett picks out the chest of Williams. Brynja Stoddard picks her head up, stops it on the end line, tries to get the cross in, earns the corner for FSU. Florida State, corner kick. I wish we had a GPS tracker on Brynja's daughter, because she covers some ground. She is all over the place. Talented player, fun to watch. So much consistency in both of these programs. Fifth corner of the night. Carson Pickett to take it. It's in towards the box, punched out by Campbell. Good commanding goalkeeping from the sophomore. Second half, if you are subbed out, you can re-enter once. Boy Visto, Fields. Interesting that Fields receives the ball with their back to goal so much in midfield. Schmidt. Grubka. Boy Visto. Shana Williams puts pressure on. It'll be a long throw-in opportunity coming all the way across the field now 
is Campbell. Julia, are you in favor of this coming all the way across the field here? Because certainly people have to be responsible for the team shape when your left back is running all across to take this throw on. I'm in favor of this when you can launch a rocket 50 yards like she can. And look at she's got a little more, more space in this corner. That's the only thing pinning in Campbell's throw-ins is, is these tight sidelines. But but isn't this time-wasting, rubbing the ball down, coming all the way <laughs> over? Couldn't this be time-wasting? It, it could be, but they don't call it. You are right. It is launched into the back post. But how about that from Jane Campbell off her line, picking that out of the sky. And that, and that trajectory is different than a corner kick because it's coming down at you. It's so hard to judge for a defender. Campbell again, so solid and clean coming out there. And we saw Brynja's daughter lurking at that back post. And we've seen a lot of keepers have a heck of a time with that throw in. And Being able to deal with it. Nice combination play here. Ubanka Gudau still has it. Plays into the feet of Ewell. One pass away from it, they overhit it. It was a beautiful buildup. Mm. One pass away from it was Stanford there. Good sequence there. And they had Turner coming out on that left side there. Ubagagu could have used that as an option as well. Trying to bring in Hannah Farr. When this daughter wants a handball, I'm not going to get it from the referee, Rachel Wu. It's Stanford right now, ticking down towards the 31 minute mark. A goal kick for FSU. <laughs> Wonderful shots uh, we've seen around the NCAA Women's College Cup. For more great social photos live from the tournament, go to ESPNW.com slash soccer snapshots. <laughs> I particularly like that last one with Paul Radcliffe there. That, that one gets artistic one. creative points. Women's College Cup stories. Virginia's all in attitude. Texas A&M's 12th man militia. Florida State's long throw of Megan Campbell throwing opponents for a loop. And a sit down with Stanford's Chi Ubagagagu. <laughs> Ubagagu. Glenn gets the prize. She's been dangerous in the second half. Has the ability to get turned. Visto, the target over her head. And talk to me about the relationship between that one-on-one -on -one matchup, Coivisto and Ubagagu, because it, it, it's made Ubagagu defend here tonight. Yeah, and, and Coivisto, to her credit, as a freshman, just giving her no space. Every time Ubagagu got, has the ball, she is right on her back, recovering if she has to. And then you've got Grubka next to you, the senior center back, who's, I think, one of the best center backs in the country, going to play in the NWSL, I hope, next year. And here she is going up in the air. Ball was flicked down by Ewell. Collected by Cassie Miller. Miller's look very self-assured. 
been protected well, but has done what she's needed to do tonight. And there again, Coivista not allowing Ubaga to get turned. Saturday at 4, ESPNU brings you the SWAC Championship. Southern looks to repeat as conference champions against Alcorn State. It's all a part of our college football primetime presented by McDonald's. You can catch it on ESPNU and watch ESPN. Good to see Kendall Romine too back at center back for Stanford. Fifth year senior who has gone through a, a series of injuries over the years. She had a goal against Florida in the quarterfinals ahead of two goals, two assists on the year. And impressed to, with the play of center backs around the country this year in women's right. soccer. And their ability to set play. Big so jump. many of them getting forward, scoring goals. Good distributors. Here's Pickett off the delivery for the Seminoles. And it'll be a corner for Florida State. Still only a 1-0 lead. It's a precarious lead. 16th minute goal from Shayna Williams. Marna Bukowski, Matthews will come on, the senior from Ken England, and again last year she was a starter, getting a breather now, is the very talented Carson Pickett. Comes again, the big throw in. Looking for Grubka on the head for that flick. Megan Campbell whips it in. Stanford again wins it. Coivisto knocked it back. It's put into the box. It's flicked on. Brynja's daughter trying to get it down. Still Brynja's daughter working, and it's maybe breakout time here. But there's still a ton of numbers back for Florida State. We recover wonderfully. Mia Fields leading that attack. She has looked good today, Julie, out in the and, wide and position. On, and on both sides of the ball, working her tail off, getting forward to the end line, getting back. Good look at Taylor Ewell. She has been the big goal scorer for Stanford as of late. Ten goals, three assists. Really has not had a good chance here yet and, and tonight. Hasn't, hasn't really had any service. There's... It's that final final third. Even you could even stretch it as back far back as their own half, their, their offensive half. Just not a lot of possession, not a lot of movement off the ball for Stanford, even though it is a little bit better in the second half, but now what about FSU? It's still only a one goal lead. Have they not pushed the pedal enough here to get a second goal in this game, or do you think it's just very measured sort of professional performance right now. I think it's it's a measured performance. They're staying organized, but I think to your point, Glenn, you get in trouble if you get too conservative, but I don't think they've gone that far yet, but I'd like them to take a little bit more initiative as well. They've seemed to lost a little bit of that momentum they had in the first half. Fields gets in on the tackle. Back in the space. Yeah. Step up, step up 
Long diagonal ball to the back post, steered away Grubka. How about that? What an animal in the air. And what a nice clear. We saw earlier today what can happen if you don't clear them high and wide. Some good delivery by Maddie Bauer from Stanford. Ewell knocks it wide. And a miss hit cross again. It's going to lead to a goal kick now for Florida State. The, the beauty, though, with having a player like Taylor Yule on the field is that she, you get her in a good position, all she needs is one chance. She needs one look, and that's how good a finisher she is around goal. That's why they keep her in in these moments. Megan Turner, 20, comes off for Stanford. Replacing number 24, Alex Haley Rose's, Rosen has come on for Stanford. Mariah Lee as well up top. And Lee had uh, some good moments in the first half. Brynja's daughter will get called for the foul. Got a little bit of a late challenge in. And this, um, and this game just a, a little bit choppy all around, isn't it? Nothing really settled yet in this second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fields, a little confusion there. We'll knock it forward. It'll be a throw into Stanford now. Again, Stanford, 21 and three on the year. 17th consecutive NCAA tournament appearance. They are down a goal now to Shayna Williams and Florida State University. Florida State unscored <laughs> upon in the NCAA tournament. That's about the fourth tackle we've seen from Fields that I've heard of here. She's just hammering at people. We're hearing the gnawing of bone. I can hear it, and we are about 20 stories up high. Brynja's daughter back defending from Hetla, Iceland. Fields picked up a yellow. Isabella Schmidt brought down by number seven, Laura Lytle. Good look at some of the individual skill of uh, Isabella Schmidt. Kirk, Mark Krikorian said that someday he sees her with great potential with the full German national team, one of their stars. Calls her a thinker, multi-dimensional player. First two years, he said, uh, she was riddled by injuries, which has kind of affected her. And she can just open up a game with uh, her ideas and her range of passing. Coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the Women's College Cup final. Join Julie and I Sunday, December 7th at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, you go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. We're looking forward to that one Friday. Virginia is lying in wait for the winner of FSU and Stanford. And as we're inside of 20 minutes, FSU has a 1-0 lead. Good switch of play, zipped across the field. Nothing like getting at the people's feet early.
this time Jameer Fields will get the benefit of a call. Those two going at it on this sideline. Laura Lytle. Jameer Fields actually grew up and played number four for Florida State. Grew up and played with Lola Bonta from Stanford. How about that? Since they were seven years old. And here they are competing in a semifinal of the NCAA Women's College Cup. Out Clicked in, on. In Southern California, Rancho Cucamonga. Fields. Still Fields. Be a throw in FSU. She has worked on both sides of the ball here. Strength, power is explosive. Added uh, additional elements to her game technically. Three goals and seven assists on the year. Again, the long throw is and Megan then, and Campbell. And you're going to see Grubka right in the front of your, your, your screen right there is going to be the one they're going to try and hit the head of or flick it if it goes short. But sometimes from this distance, Campbell can hit all the way to that back post. She bypasses the near post. Shot over the top. And it leads to that second balls. And shooting opportunities. It's just so dangerous the way it comes out. Michaela Hahn there for the, the putback. This was good from Stanford. That took a deflection easily handled by Cassie Miller. He distributes Emma Coyvee still. Better rhythm from Stanford. And as they get down to this last 15, again, you get into that area if you're going to have to send more numbers, take more risks. It's a possession game of Florida State fraying a little bit at this stage. It, they, they seem to be a little flat right now, don't they? They're playing good defensively, though, because you can see them all over the field. But when they're getting it, they're not having that same rhythm as they did in the first half. Yeah, they got uh, two very tight lines here. Their back four and their midfield. Very tight, not making it easy. And they have been impenetrable. And really, Stanford's best chances have not been through creation of their own. It's been through self-inflicted mistakes and a loss of possession in uh, their own third from Florida State. Now, this is dangerous. A chance to get the cross and again blocked. Boy, they blocked a lot of crosses, too. Florida State substitution into the game number 19, Shayna Williams. So Shayna Williams, the game's Great lone goal scorer. We go all the way back to the 16th minute daughter. comes on. Berglund Thorvald's daughter will come off. Last year, uh, played a large portion uh, of the season injured and was a starting striker. Here, uh, more off the bench for Mark Cricori. Boy, Vista. Good ball to the corner flag. Shana Williams getting uh, tightly marked there. Laura Lytle for the moment picking her up and it's thrown to the feet. And off the turn, trying to whip it in, a hand got on it. Just a big hand uh, came jumping up into the air from Jane Campbell to help that on. So good on the turn. We saw it in the goal she scored earlier. Look at that nice little touch. Holds the defender off as she's there. There's no one for Florida State on that back post. Maybe even could have cut it. Pulled it to the penalty spot. 
scored a fantastic goal here tonight. And the more we look at it, the, the more we see the degree of difficulty climbing that goal that she scored. That was a beauty. Got turned, chopped, and cut it back, and then hit a finish of tremendous accuracy. And, and what a nice addition.